All right, Tim, take it away. All right, so this is our class on cloud storage. As always, if you have any questions, um, feel free to use Zoom to raise your hand or type it in chat. And in person, Mary's kind of going to be on the lookout for that. We have certain points at this in this uh, where it is kind of convenient to stop. So we'll probably stop there and ask for questions periodically. Um, and as always, if you have any questions afterwards, I find that's when I always have my best questions. Feel free to email Mary. Uh, if Mary has your email address, she will send you both a link to the presentation, so the slides, and a link to the video recording of the of this class. Uh, the good thing about having the slides is the next time we run this class or whenever I get around to it, I will also update the slides. So in you know a year or two years, if you look back on these slides, you'll see updated information. All right, so what is cloud storage? Um, this is kind of like a clinical definition. Basically, uh, cloud storage is the ability to store files not on one of your devices, um, or in addition, on your devices, but also somewhere else. This is really useful if um, your computer dies or something of that nature, because your all of your documents and photos and anything you put on cloud storage will be available to the next device you get. So you don't have to worry about losing all of your family's photos if your computer dies. So some things to think about uh, with thinking about cloud storage is what type of computer do you have? Where do you work? Do you travel? Do you have internet? How old is your computer and hot or cold? Um, so basically, you're going to want to, if you're thinking about getting cloud storage, you're going to want to think about a solution that works best for you. And there are so many options. You don't have to feel, uh, you don't have to feel like you need to be shoehorned into a specific uh, way to back up your files. So, for example, do you have internet? If you have good internet, then cloud storage is nice because all of your files will be available online and on your computer, twenty four seven, whenever you want them. If you have bad internet, uh, one of the things cloud storage lets you do is you can do as much work or add as many photos to your computer as you want. And then the next time you're at the library or at a coffee shop that has internet, it will automatically upload all of those for you. You don't have to worry really about um, like manually doing anything when it comes to cloud storage. As soon as it has internet, it will upload and download information. Uh, the next thing is how old is your computer? The older your computer gets, uh, the better an idea it becomes of how to of having some sort of backup for the data that's on your computer. Uh, generally for laptops, I like to say that um, you know after about seven years with a laptop, uh, like five to seven years, you should think about getting a new one just because they have a propensity to be more breakable than desktop computers. Whereas if you have a desktop computer, you can get seven to 10 years out of it before you really have to worry about getting a new one. Um, and, you know, again, cloud storage alleviates some of these concerns because you know that if your computer dies, you won't lose any data. Saving documents. So um, at the basis of cloud storage is just saving your stuff. So you can save your documents in multiple places. You can save it on your computer. You can save it on a removable media. That's kind of like a USB drive. Uh, USB drives aren't the best for backing up important information because USB drives are more likely to fail or get lost than other ways of storing your data in the cloud. That's primarily what we'll be talking about today. As long as you have internet, you will be able to put your data in the cloud and it's going to be, <clears throat> and you can expect it to be relatively safe there. Uh, NAS or a NAS unit is essentially a very fancy hard drive or a series of hard drives that connects to your computer or device, phone, laptop, tablet, TV via a network. A network can be thought of as a physical cable that you plug into your computer or device. It can also be thought of as your wireless network in your house or a hard copy. This is just where you have an important document 
you want to save it, so you print it out and you put it in your safe. So like if you want a copy of your taxes or something like that, you would, to save it, you could print it out on a piece of paper and store it in a, in a file box. Um, sometimes people wonder like, where can I access these cloud drives on my computer? So I added this slide. Um, so if you have a Windows computer, it will look like this. If you have a Mac, it will be slightly different. Uh, on your Mac, it will be on the top bar. Uh, you'll have a little icon for your various cloud drives, and you'll be able to click on that and click on Open Folder. But on a Windows computer, if you go to the folder icon, which is your File Explorer, and click on it, on the left-hand side, you will see a list of your various cloud options that you have installed on your computer. For this one, I have circled in red, uh, Dropbox and OneDrive. Um, I have two at the moment, just to show you that you can have more than one if you so desire. One of the things I really like to do is I really like to separate all of my files so I don't have any confusion about where something is. So for all of my work files, I put them in OneDrive. And for all of my personal files, I'll put them in Dropbox. And this allows me to quickly know where something is, Dropbox or OneDrive. Uh, this is kind of a visual representa representation of where is your data. Uh, and the answer is wherever you want it. So if you're using cloud storage, a document that is in the bottom left on your desktop computer will go into the cloud. From the cloud, it will then go to your laptop computer on the bottom right and your phone in the bottom. So any document, as long as you have the same cloud service installed on all of your devices, any document that you save on one device or edit on, a, on one device will go to the cloud and get synced with all of your other documents. This is really nice because it means that if you do work on something on a desktop computer and then you leave for vacation or on a work trip, your laptop will also have that document as soon as it connects to the internet. Do we have any questions on where your data is stored? I know this, this concept can be uh, weirdly confusing because uh, it's kind of a different way to think about it. And just remember, if you're trying to talk, you're probably muted if you're using Zoom because that's on by default. We don't have any, I have a question, Tim. Um, you can choose what you want to put up in the cloud. You don't have to put everything up in the cloud, correct? Correct. Um, generally, with a lot of these cloud storage solutions, uh, you will pick and choose at a certain point in time what folders you want it to put in the cloud. So by default, a lot of these will take um, your documents folder, your pictures folder, and automatically select those as things to put in the cloud. But they'll all also install a folder, which is what you saw on the previous slide. They'll all install a folder for themselves so that it's pretty easy. Anything you put in there will be backed up to the cloud. Okay, that's for a PC, but yeah. Well, go ahead. Um, is there just one cloud? I mean, there's different ways to get to the cloud, but is there just one? cloud it depends how you look at it um a cloud the cloud is just things on the internet so whenever you're storing something in the cloud you are storing your data in a series of climate controlled server rooms all across the world um so oh, yeah. there are depending on your definition there are an infinite number of clouds or there's one cloud oh, uh, depending like on how broad how broadly you want to define it. Like when they say iCloud, is that the same as the cloud? Do you have iCloud I, on your yes. Mac? Yes. So iCloud is uh, Apple's um, foray into the cloud. Okay. So that would be a singular cloud by Apple. Okay. Yep. So different cloud services don't really uh, talk to each other. So you consider you can consider them uh, individual clouds. Does that make sense? Nancy, you had a question or a comment. Uh, the, well, the thing that he showed before was for a PC, and I'm wondering, what does it look like for Mac? It looks uh, 
fairly similar. Um, on a Mac, you just would go to Finder instead of File Explorer. Uh, but whenever I use my Mac, um, instead of going to File Explorer or Finder, I will go to the top bar. So on the top right-hand side of your Mac, uh, if you have a cloud thing installed um, or a cloud service installed, it, a little icon will show up on the top right there, and you can click on it. Other questions, Joanne. I uh, wonder if there's any benefit to having the Google documents in the Dropbox. Is that free up space and do you manually drag it all in? How, how, how does that work? So um, we, we'll be going over kind of space saving with cloud storage in a little bit. Um, but generally, if, if it's something like Google Docs, uh, you'd want to use Google Docs with you know, Google's cloud, which is Google Drive, uh, just because of the compatibility with opening and editing those uh, those files. I have a question. Yeah, we have a question. So um, I get a new iPhone not that long ago, and in the settings, it said for the iCloud, you could put in your calendar, your messages, your emails. So are you saying in the cloud, you have a folder for each one of those if you did say you want them in the cloud? Yeah, so with Apple specifically, um, you could think of it as each of those things having a folder, but they kind of hide it from you. The, mm -hmm. the way I would look at it is on your Mac, uh, you have a calendar application. All that's saying is any calendar that you have synced with your iPhone will also go into the calendar application on your Apple laptop or desktop. So it's not necessarily a folder, but it will go to the relevant application. And if you want to or don't want to do that, uh, you can go to iCloud on the device and you can do that little green toggle that says, I want this to be stored in the cloud or I don't want this to be stored in the cloud. Did you have any follow-up? Yeah, yes. Um, I know some people will choose like uh, emails or messages mm -hmm. or calendars if they want in the iCloud. Is, is there any benefit for that? I mean, uh, if you're working, you might need that. But if you're not working, I mean, do you want all your messages really in the iCloud? Um, it's kind of up to you. Uh, I personally... Uh, do uh, specifically like messages. I think the interaction between the messages app on my laptop computer and the messages on my iPhone is wonderful. I really like the ability to see a message on my iPhone, look at it and say, hmm, I want to type a lot, but I don't want to use my thumbs. So I'll go to my laptop and I will type it up in there in messages and then send it out. And then all of that syncs together. So it's, I don't lose a message by switching devices. Um, the other thing to note is things like messages and calendar and events and appointments and notes and stuff like that. Uh, they don't take up that much space. Uh, so even the free um, five or 10 gigs, I forget which, and I just filled it out on the slide and a couple slides. Uh, the five or 10 gigs that you get for free is generally enough to sync things like that. Nancy has a question. Okay, now this relates to what you just said. I just looked on my phone and it's trying to sell me uh, a larger cloud that I would pay monthly for. Yep. Uh, why do I want to do that? Uh, so you can store more stuff is essentially the answer to that. We'll go over kind of pricing um, in a little bit, but that's definitely a, definitely something that people should should think about before they before they spend money is how much data do you really need? Yeah, right. And how do you throw it out? If you find, if there's stuff that you discover that you no longer need, can you throw it away and then and thus not pay more for storing it forever? Yep, uh, you can delete things 
and you can delete it from your if you, if everything is synced you can delete it from your phone uh, you can go online to iCloud and delete it from iCloud and you can also go to a various computer and delete it from there and then it will delete it from from everything but you have to go to each place to delete it nope just one place and it will sync so if you delete something on your phone it will then if it's being synced to your laptop it will then be deleted from your laptop as well and the cloud yeah. yes so you don't want anymore if you delete it on your your iphone it will be deleted as long as it's properly okay. syncing okay. yep as long as you have syncing turned on okay okay thanks sure all right so uh the simple strategy if you want a file to be backed up is um well the simplest way to think about it is the three two one backup rule so that means you want to have three copies of your data on two different media and one of those copies off-site uh, basically what this used to mean for before the cloud was a thing was you'd have three copies of your data so you'd have a copy of your data on your computer you would have a copy of your data on um, on an external hard drive, and then one copy off-site, you would have an additional um, device that you would have the data on, probably a hard drive, that you would then take out of the house. So what this is in reference to is if your house burns down, if you have 100 backups, but they're all in your house, then the data is still gone. You know, you kind of need something to not be in the same location as all of your other devices. So in this scenario, the 321 backup rule, your cloud storage kind of fulfills and answers all of these questions because it's automatically offsite. But just in case you ever see, you know, 321 backup rule anywhere, or if you just want a simple, what are these things called, Mary? Where it's like a simple phrase to remind you of something? Ah, yes, like a password reminder. Yeah, well, sort of. either way, I forget the word, but it's just a simple thing to remember. How should I back up my data? Three, two, one. All right, so this is kind of an older slide, but um, some people will, go, like myself, will go absolutely crazy with saving things. So they'll <laughs> have like 10 copies of a single file. Right. So they'll have it on their computer. They'll have it synced with cloud storage one, with cloud storage two. They'll have a hard drive that's plugged into their computer. Um, and the positives to having like a whole bunch of locations where you save something is there's less chance of losing documents. The negatives of having multiple locations is that you have a very high chance of editing the wrong version. So if you have a different copy of a file on your laptop computer and your desktop computer, and you are normally working on your laptop computer, that version of the file, uh, you can accidentally use the desktop version, and then you can kind of get all out of whack with what have you done, what haven't you done uh, when it comes to editing a file. So I like to try and keep it to that three, two, one rule, just to make it very clear of where something is stored because it's very easy for it to get out of hand. If, Nancy has a question. If, so if yep. you edit something, is there any way to have it automatically the edits go to the three places? Or so not? that's kind of one of the things that cloud storage is really good at is if you're utilizing cloud storage for this, it will automatically update all of the locations where that document is stored as long as all of those locations use that cloud service. But it would be, you know, your laptop computer, your desktop computer, and your phone would all have the updated document. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just, we have a patron who can't see the, the slides. Oh, and mnemonic, got it. Three, two, one, mnemonic. Oh, mnemonic <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, this is a slide uh, just on how to organize. I'm not gonna go into it too deeply, uh, but basically if you are trying to save a file, 
um, just remember to name the file something that makes sense. So in this example, if you have a Comcast bill, and for some reason you like to keep your Comcast bills, if you just name your Comcast bill Comcast, it's not going to be very helpful. If you name the bill Comcast 0606-2023, then it's pretty clear that that is a Comcast bill from today. So it'll just make it easier in the long run to, to see where you have stuff or what versions of things you have. All right, so cloud storage. All right, so these are the, the main ones. I would consider these to kind of be the big four. Uh, we have Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud, and OneDrive. So Google Drive is by Google. Um, and one thing you'll notice is all of these have very similar pricing. So Google Drive, it's two terabytes of uh, storage for $10 a month. Dropbox has two terabytes of storage for $12 a month. iCloud has two terabytes of storage for $10 a month. And OneDrive has one terabyte for $7 a month or six terabytes for $10 a month. Uh, Google Drive is by Google. Dropbox is by Dropbox. iCloud is by Apple. And OneDrive is through Microsoft. Um, a lot of people ask specifically about iCloud. If you have Mac computers and you're using an iPhone, iCloud is absolutely fantastic. If you use Windows computers, there isn't really a reason to go with iCloud. It, it works, but it's not, um, it's not the best solution. Um, but if you have a Mac and you don't really want to think about it, iCloud is the way to go. The pricing is very competitive with everyone else. The other thing that is specialized is on this list is OneDrive. Um, in addition to the storage that OneDrive gives you, if you do these monthly plans, you also gain access to the Office programs, the Microsoft Office programs. So these are things like Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint. Uh, those programs also come with this, um, with this subscription. So it, it's kind of like a value add. Uh, one of the things you'll notice on this slide is that everything to the right-hand side of it has files on demand in parentheses. Uh, files on demand means that you can access files without storing them on your computer. It's kind of a weird concept, so I'll go over it in another slide, but it basically saves you a lot of space. Can I ask a uh, question? Did you, before yep. you get to the next slide, Tom, uh, the, Tim, the, um, when you talked about OneDrive, does that back up Apple information or just Microsoft inf information? Yeah, so uh, OneDrive can be used on your Apple computer. Um, it's the main one I use on my Apple computer, actually. So OneDrive uh, works wherever you want. Um, and especially if you're using things like Word or PowerPoint or Excel, um, mm -hmm. it's a really good choice. The other thing is I noticed it says six people. So that means me, my husband, and my sister, we could all yes. use yep. the same drive, so to speak. Okay. Uh, you would all have separate drives, but you would have the ability to share files between them. Okay. Um, and everyone on that list would also get the Microsoft Office uh, suite. Well, great, so thank you. So they would all get Word, Excel, all that stuff. And we have a question in the classroom. Oh, hey, Tim. If you subscribe to Office 365 uh, once a year and you use OneDrive, do you still have to pay the $10 per month for the two terabits? Um, no, so, so the kind of the weird thing, but also the nice thing with Microsoft, is it's all one. So if you buy a 365 subscription, you get OneDrive. If you buy OneDrive, you get 365 subscription. It's essentially the same thing. You can just get it through uh, through two different uh, vectors. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions before we go on? Okay. Um, so 
I added this slide uh, for additional cloud storage because they fulfill a very specific need or uh, if you search, you know, best cloud drive solutions, uh, they'll show up. So I just wanted to make sure to add them here. Uh, Mega, um, I don't know if you guys remember the crazy person in New Zealand called Kim.com. Uh, yes, I said that right. He changed his name to .com. Um, he founded a cloud storage company called Mega. And one of the interesting things about it is that it is zero knowledge. So what zero knowledge is, is that the cloud storage provider has absolutely no idea what files you are storing. It cannot see the files. It cannot look at the files. It can't get any information from the files. Um, if you are concerned about a tyrannical government or if you're just doing something highly illegal, uh, zero knowledge is what you would want to go with. And it's price competitive, two terabytes for $10.70 a month. Um, iDrive, if you notice, gives you more data. So it gives you five terabytes for $60 a year, which is a much better price than the other solutions. The problem with iDrive is that it is not, it doesn't have files on demand. And again, the next slide will cover what that is. Uh, P Cloud is another zero knowledge. So again, if you want to, you know, make sure your files are not viewable in any way for from anyone else, zero knowledge. Uh, Sync is also a good option that a lot of people enjoy. And the last one on this list, an honorable mention, is Amazon Prime. Uh, the important thing with Amazon Prime is you get if you already buy things from Amazon. Um, or you like the Amazon Prime video service or whatever, what have you, uh, you also get the ability to have, to back up unlimited photos to the cloud. This is really nice if you, one, use Amazon and two, take a lot of photos um, because there isn't like an arbitrary two terabyte limit. It's just everything. As many photos as you want, It'll get backed up into the cloud. Um, and Amazon Prime, like all of these other solutions, have the ability for you to have uh, the app on your phone. So anytime you would take a photo, it would automatically go to Amazon Prime. It would automatically go to Amazon Photos, sorry. So it would just automatically move everything over, which is kind of nice. So files on demand. I have a picture here. It may be slightly difficult to see. But under 2022 taxes, there is a green check mark. If you go directly below that, pictures, it has a green circle. And if you look at the thing in red, it has a blue cloud. So this is what files on demand is referencing. The blue cloud, everything in that folder is online only. But when I open the folder, I would see what files are inside. If I then wanted to open one of those files, it would then download that file to my computer so I could view it. So essentially, until I try and open it, it doesn't take up space on my computer. This is really nice because it allows you to have to take advantage of that two terabyte cloud storage if your computer does not have that much storage on it. So you can basically create a folder and say, I want everything in this folder to not take up space on my computer, but I still want to have it saved. Um, the green check mark, like the one you see on 2022 taxes, means that this, that files that are in this folder, some of them or all of them are locally available. That means that these files have been downloaded and are currently on the computer. If you see a folder with a green circle, it means anything you put on this device will always be on this device. That is a complicated concept. And one of the things that Apple does to alleviate that is it doesn't tell you any of this. Apple's iCloud kind of hides this part away from you. And if you haven't looked at a file in one year, 
and it thinks your computer could have more use more storage space, it will just remove things from your computer and put them in the cloud. So this is kind of nice because Apple will automatically kind of lower the amount of space that these things are taking up. But it's also kind of annoying because if you go on vacation and you want to show someone the photos, you may not have them on your computer if you don't have internet. We have a question in the classroom. How yes. do you how do you take things out of the cloud and put them all back on your computer? Or <clears throat> so in this scenario. Are they always in the cloud? Yeah. So everything in this folder structure is always 100% always in the cloud. The only question is if it's also on your computer. So um, to download something from the cloud to your computer in this setup, this is a uh, OneDrive, by the way, in this setup, you can either open up the file that you want to have downloaded, or <clears throat> you can right click on the folder <clears throat> and say, make this folder always available on my device. And then it will automatically download everything that's in that folder. Okay, but I'm, I'm thinking if, if you wanna um, minimize your the stuff that's in the cloud, because you don't wanna pay, the, you want only want to use the two um, gigabytes instead of the five or whatever. Um, is there a way to take things off out of the cloud to make it? Because I'm I'm constantly getting messages saying my cloud my iCloud is full. Yep. So is there a way to take things yeah. out? Yep. Um, in this example, this is a folder structure on a Windows computer. Is I would just take a folder and take it out of here. So this is in the OneDrive folder. I would just remove the folder from the OneDrive folder. For Apple specifically, um, one of the things you can do is either on your computer or on your cell phone, you can go to I iCloud and it will give you uh, in on your Mac, it'll be in system preferences. In your iPhone, it will be under uh, uh, settings under your name and then you click on iCloud and it will give you like a bar that shows you what type of information is taking up space in your iCloud. Um, the thing that will take up the most space in no particular order are photos, uh, videos, and backups. So if you have your phone being backed up, that will automatically take a lot of the free space. Um, if you have a lot of photos, that will take a lot of photos as well. Or if you have a lot of photos, that will take up a lot of space as well. And then uh, I just wanted to get to the questions in the chat. Uh, someone said, I like to name files with date in this format, which is year, month, date. Uh, so they appear in chronological order. Yes, that's, I really like that as well, because then if you sort by name, you get everything by year, by month, by day. <clears throat> and then question, did Dropbox used to always use computer hard drive storage? So Dropbox is one of the ones uh, that has files on demand which means that it will always be in the cloud, um, but you can have the option to have it always on your computer as well. So files on demand is somewhat of a tricky concept, but it boils down to everything that's in the folder or folders that are being utilized by the cloud storage everything in there is always online. The only thing files on demand let you do is it allows you to have it not also on your computer or phone or laptop. So it allows you to save space that's on your computer, but still have everything backed up in the cloud. All right, <clears throat> so here's a comparative. Eventually, uh, people generally think to themselves or ask me, you know, why am I dealing with cloud? With putting stuff in the cloud, you know, is it cheaper? Um, you know, why? 
you know, what are the other options available? So on this slide, uh, in the top right, we have the wonderful cloud icon for OneDrive. Um, and it's going to be our cloud storage thing for this comparative. So it gives you two terabytes for $100 a year. So that's roughly $49.5 per terabyte. For an, a normal external hard drive like Western Digital, four terabytes of space costs $100. That's $25 per terabyte. For a NAS unit, uh, this one's from Synology. NAS units are the ones that allow you to have data on it and also have it connected to your network, which allows your computer to access it from anywhere. It's kind of like a little cloud server that you own. Um, a four bay NAS unit will be about $550 and filling it with four six terabyte hard drives are $100 each. So that is a total of almost $1,000. Per year? For a one-time purchase. Okay. Uh, but that would get you 18 terabytes of storage for $53 per terabyte for the first year. In the bottom left, I have the per year cost at five and 10 years. So per year, according to this slide, having an external hard drive for five years will be $20 a year. And if it survives for 10 years, it will be $10 a year. A NAS unit, the big expensive thing, for five years, it will be $190 per year. And at 10 years, it will be $95 per year. The cloud storage remains constant at $99 a year. So cloud storage is great, but don't go into it thinking that it will save you money is, is essentially the point of this slide. You want to choose cloud storage for its own merits, not because of the price. Because even buying the really expensive NAS unit, if that sucker lasts, it'll be cheaper than cloud storage after 10 years. And you will have a lot more storage available. So if you need a ton of storage, it's a really good option. But otherwise, it costs a lot of money. Um, some of you people with eagle eyes may have done the math and realized that having four six terabyte drives does not equal 18 terabytes. It equals 24 terabytes. That is because the NAS unit has a RAID level to it. All that means is in this NAS unit in the bottom right, if a drive dies, you just take out that drive and replace it and you lose no data. So if you're worried about losing a hard drive and that causing you to lose data, that's where a NAS unit is really nice because you can lose a drive and you're still fine. Uh, we have a question with external hard drive, do you still need iCloud? So the reason why iCloud or any cloud storage is still useful in this scenario, even though it's, you know, admittedly more expensive than having a hard drive <clears throat> is that one, hard drives can break. And two, if your house is flooded or burns down, following the three, two, one rule, an external hard drive doesn't fulfill that need of having your data in a offsite location, in a secondary location. Tim, is there any way that you can, a general rule for how much storage an individual person who's not writing dissertations or encyclopedias um, might benefit from? From cloud storage in general? Yeah, cloud storage in general. I mean, well, how many? I would argue if, I mean, in terms of storage, if you're writing a dissertation, that doesn't take much storage. Uh, but I do like the dissertation uh, thought process. 
because if you're writing a dissertation, cloud storage would be awesome because you're writing a dissertation, you've spent three years of your life on this tiny 50 page piece of, you know, all of the culmination of all, every single thing you've learned about a subject for the past four years. Um, you wanna make sure that there's no chance that thing gets deleted or lost. And cloud storage virtually guarantees that your file isn't gonna get deleted or lost. One of the things that's nice with cloud storage is if you accidentally delete a file and you don't realize it, you just go into your cloud storage and you say, hey, I had this file a month ago. Can I have it back, please? And you're able to go back in time and grab that file. If you make a whole bunch of edits to a document that for some reason deleted a lot of the information, you can go to that document and you can say, hey, I'd like you know three revisions ago. Um, cloud storage, you generally, I like to think of it as being very important for having peace of mind because no matter what you do, it's kind of hard for you to mess it up. And also if you have multiple devices, it allows that data to be synced. So if you have two computers and a phone, it basically means that the data between those three devices will stay constant synced and backed up. Because if you have like an external hard drive, then you have to remember to put things on the external hard drive, for example. Whereas cloud storage, it automatically does all of that, all of that for you. Would you encourage an individual who's just getting started with cloud star storage to start with a free account and just see and wait until you start to get those notices that you need more? 100%. Um, so as an anecdotal bit of information, um, I have been a uh, Gmail user since uh, the public alpha or the closed alpha, I'm sorry, where you had to get invited to it, right? I've had Gmail for as long as it has existed minus like two months. Um, I use the free version of its storage and I think I'm at like 80% and that's been a good 16 years. So 16 years or so of every single paper, every single file, every single document I've ever dealt with in my life from high school, from like the middle of high school to after college to work is in my Google Drive and I have not filled it up. So unless you are taking a lot of photos or storing movies or stuff like that, um, oftentimes you don't even need to pay because the free amount is enough for you. It also just so happens that Google Drive has 15 gigabytes free, which is an on which is an on the higher end for uh, how much storage you get for free. But I would definitely start with a with a free with the free version of something. Um, and then if you like what it does, then that's when you would look into paying for it. Um, the caveats to that are OneDrive. If you also want the office suite, you're getting OneDrive anyway. So you can view it as a good value in that in that respect. Are you going to go over on how to share files from the cloud to other people? Um, we can. Uh, sharing is generally, depending on your cloud storage provider, is generally as simple as right clicking on the file and hitting share. But at the end, I can definitely go over how to do that for um, probably for Google Drive, I think would be the easiest, just because that's what this presentation's on. Right. Like that's what this file is. Yes. The, yeah. Google Drive. The file that is the presentation is on Google Drive. All right. Um, not to confuse anyone, but this is totally confusing. Uh, mm -hmm. File storage is different from backup. I'm just going to say, yes, it's different. And I'm not really going to explain it, except to say that if you want your computer, like a computer backed up, uh, my favorite option is Backblaze, 
It's $70 a year. They do not care how big your computer is. They don't care how many photos or videos are on your computer. Everything on your computer gets backed up and you just don't have to think about it, right? It, re it requires no thinking. It's just if your computer dies, everything that was on your computer is backed up. All right, you can't see me, but I'm just gave myself the thumbs up. All right, uh, security, is it safe? Um, yeah, sure, I use it, it's safe. Is it the most secure thing in the world? Probably not. Is it safer than a lot of other things that you do online? Yeah, so cloud storage is safe. Um, if you are extremely worried about the data that you are storing in the cloud, that's when you would go with one of these zero knowledge options that I had listed. Um, but if you go with zero knowledge, uh, if you lose your password, there is no way of getting your files back. So just to repeat that, in Google, if you have Google Drive and you lose the password to your Google Drive, you can reset your password through various means and get your files back. If you use a zero knowledge service and you lose your password, there is no way to get any of your data back. And question, if you use yes. the password manager, does that work for that? Yep, uh, that's what I use is a password manager, mainly so that I can't have the option of forgetting my password for this or anything really. Um, and the reason why some people like zero knowledge is um, in various countries, uh, specifically China, um, anything that's stored on Chinese servers, uh, the Chinese government has to be able to view it. Where you stand on that issue doesn't really matter, um, but in terms of privacy, it's not very good. Uh, in the US, we have a similar provision called the Cloud Act where the government can ask a cloud storage provider to hand over the data they have on you or the data that you're storing. Um, this is for, you know, was put in place for uh, kind of one of those save the kids kind of thing. So it's really hard to be against it, um, but it's slightly frightening, but I'm not gonna do, go full uh, conspiracy theory on you. Um, but anyway, just know if you don't use zero knowledge, the US government, so law enforcement can ask a company like Google to give all of the give them all of the data you have stored on Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox, and they may or may not uh, comply with that request. File size, uh, this is just a quick thing for how many files per gigabyte. So with pictures, you get roughly 600 pictures per gigabyte. Uh, Word files, 10,000. Um, the reason I put this on there is because people always ask if they should delete documents to free up space. And uh, deleting Word files or Excel files are not going to do anything to the amount of storage you have. Um, they are very, very small. If you need to free up space, it's going to be video files, and then after video files, it'll be a whole bunch of pictures. Would be uh, would be the culprit there. All right. So we're on to questions, uh, but Mary asked if we could do um, how to share something. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, um, after we do a cloud storage class, uh, this like generic cloud storage class, um, we will ask if anyone has a specific cloud storage that they want to go over. The reason for that is um, we we tried doing them individually one year, and it was very clear that some were way more popular than others. Uh, so if anyone has a specific one that they want to go over, you can definitely come in on Wednesday, and I can kind of go through whatever you want one-on-one -on -one, uh, with regards to a specific cloud storage solution, um, or people can ask for, you know, if a group of people ask for how to use OneDrive, you know, we'll do a class specifically on OneDrive because while a lot of the cloud storage options are very similar in what they can do, 
Um, there are some slight differences which can prove to be annoying. Um, if you know you, you watch me do this on Google Drive and then you try and replicate it using OneDrive. So with Google Drive, you would go to uh, drive.google.com. So the, this is where Google Drive is online. In general, whenever you are trying to share a file using a cloud storage solution, I find it simpler just to always go online to do that process. So for Google Drive, it is drive.google.com. You then find the file that you want to share, the file or folder, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna share this picture, which is hilarious. Um, I'm gonna click in the top right, the three different dots, click on share. This then gives me the option of sharing it with people. So I can just go with Mary. I'm gonna make her an editor of this picture, but I can change it so that she's only able to view it or comment on it. And if I hit send, it would then send Mary an email with a link to this file. If you want to do something like share a folder or share a document uh, for the, you know, for greater public consumption, you can go to copy link. So if I hit copy link, I have copied the address specifically to this file. If I then go to restricted, I have a couple of options, restricted and anyone with the link. So if it's restricted, it's only people with access can open with the link. What that means is only people who have been added to this people with access section, and I do that by clicking on here, add people in groups, only people in this group can access this file with this link. If I go to anyone with the link, that means if I post this link on Facebook or anything like that, anyone who types that address in or clicks that link can access this file. That makes sense to everyone. Mm -hmm. the, oh, go ahead. Well, the only other thing to add with that is if you share a folder, so uh, I'll just do a new folder, new folder. Food. So my family um, has a, if, you, if you've ever seen me, you'll understand. My family uh, enjoys eating food, uh, me more than the rest of my family. Um, and we share recipes. Good, right? Everyone likes food. So we have a folder that's called recipes. Uh, I didn't want to spell that under pressure, so I went with food. Um, so we have a folder called food. And we, anyone, anytime anyone makes a new meal or tries a new recipe that they like, they will add it to their folder. Now, if we share this, this folder called food with someone, with Mary, this means that anything that's put in that folder, Mary can have access to. So that's very useful for us because now we don't have to have like a long string of emails or just email whenever we have a new recipe. We just put it in the folder and then anyone who has access to that folder is able to view it and then try it for themselves. So if you share a folder, remember that anything you put in that folder will be shared. Okay, I think I cut you off, Mary. Oh, no, I, I was just saying that's great. And I was thinking maybe if you, there's a question in the chat, um, but if you right click the food folder and you see the various or the three dots, can you just sort of go over those with people? Sure, so uh, share, uh, we kind of just did that. A copy link, this would, we kind of also showed that it would copy the link directly to this folder, 
Um, this only really matters if we have it set to view with anyone or if we have people marked on the folder who can view it. Add shortcut to drive. All this does is it adds a shortcut to the main folder of drive. Um, it doesn't matter because it's in the main folder of drive. Move to, this is one way to move a folder or an item uh, to a different folder or location on your drive. Add to starred. This is just kind of a label uh, that you can sort by. You can look in the on the left-hand side. It'll say starred. This just means like any anything that you need to interact with. You know, you can use starred however you want. I generally do it with things I need to edit. I will add it to starred. So if I'm never, if I don't remember what I should be editing or what document I should be creating, I just go to my starred folder and everything is there. Rename, this just renames the file or folder. Um, please note this does not change any of the sharing that you have done with it. Uh, people, if you rename a document, people who you have shared it with, shared it with are still able to have access to that document. Change color. If you notice on the left-hand side right here, this is a gray folder. If I want all of my food-related things to be blue, I can change it to blue. And now it's just easier to see that it's a different type of folder. Uh, search within food. What this does is if you go to the top, you'll see search in drive. Um, and you type anything in there, it will search everything you have stored in Drive for that word or phrase. If you do search within food, that means that it's only going to search this folder for that word or phrase. View details. This will give you, it's kind of like uh, preferences on Windows, where it will give you information like how many files are in this folder, how much storage is it taking up, that kind of thing. When was it created? When was it last modified? It'll just show you details about the file or folder. Download will download the folder or file, in this case, a folder. And it would also download anything that is held within that folder. And remove is delete. Thank you. And there was a question in chat. Can I include both folders I have created and folders shared with me under the same folder? Yes, you can move a folder that has been shared with you. You can move that into a folder that only you have access to. Uh, but if you do it the other way around, it would, any, the person who shared the folder with you would then have access to everything that you put in that folder if that answers that question. Any last questions for Tim? I highly encourage sort of absorb that we've received a lot of information, absorb it. Tim is here this Wednesday and next Wednesday, but the last two of the month, we won't be able to do tech drop-in, but 12 to one, he's, he's here to answer questions. And you can always also email me questions and I will send them along to him. Yeah. And yeah. what is the file you used it? So we have to upload it. Um, once I've uploaded it, uh, we'll send out the recording and the, the slides to everybody who's on the email list who's registered. Okay. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. That was amazing. That was amazing. Thank you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.